So welcome everybody. This is Lee Moore Weber with Design Memory Craft, Faber Castell Design Memory Craft, and I am going to give you a good show tonight. Um, so I know this piece may. First of all, let's just say hello because I know I haven't been here for a while, um, and you guys are probably wondering if I'm still dead or alive. Still alive, thankfully. Okay, thankfully still alive, and. Um, and uh, we're going to create some uh, a fun piece tonight. I'm going to kind of show you, um, you know, the, the art world has been quite the, um, has really been making a splash, hasn't it? And um, because I'm kind of in that world, I thought, you know what, what the heck, let's bring it to you, Stream. And um, I created this piece at NAMTA this year, uh, just sitting at the booth and, and uh, playing. So I thought, you know what, I'm going to show you how to do it if you don't know how to draw. So I drew this piece and I painted it with gelatos and some of our mediums, but I'm gonna show you how to do this even though you may not be able to draw um, and make it really fun and beautiful, all right? So um, I just feel like, you know, you could have a beautiful piece of art with something that you love on your wall and you don't need to be stressed out about, you know, not knowing how to draw something. And so, I'm going to show you what we're going to use tonight, and the first thing that we're going to use, this is not from Faber Castell, but it's one of my favorite um, pieces to work with, and this is a gesso board by Ampersand, love these so, so much, um, they have clay boards, gesso boards, all sorts of boards, but I do particularly love the gesso board for this particular technique. So I'm going to go ahead and grab one of our palette knives, you guys know that I have hundreds of these because if I don't, I would die. It's like my favorite palette knife of all time. I know. Is that not crazy that that was made with gelatos? Yeah. Yeah, it's crazy. And this, like I said, is just an ampersand gesso board. Okay. And I believe you can get them at, um, I don't know, art supply uh, stores and um, I don't know. Do you guys know what does Michael sell these? I don't I don't think so. Maybe I, I don't really know um, In the States. I know in Canada art supply stores will carry them and The other thing that you're going to need is I love having a palette knife now or palette knife palette sheet if you have um, Like a craft mat that works too, but I love these things. These are just great. They're disposable um, and they come in like a, a pack right like disposable palettes so these are really really great uh, for gelatos so definitely get your hands on some of those and um, you are going to need some carbon paper unless you know how to draw so for those of you that don't know how to draw this is what you're going to need and then of course what you're going to need is your favorite I'm just gonna move this out of the way your favorite uh, just a piece of um, art or like a, a, a piece of art sorry a uh, an image that's what I want to say an image that you like okay so I just I have a whole bunch of printed from a while ago and I thought oh my gosh you know I'm just gonna use these because these are kind of fun um, and these are just some flowers and poppies and uh, I'm just gonna pick one I thought I saw one earlier that I kind of liked and I thought you know what I'll just make that uh, but let me see if I can find it again it's not this one Maybe I was dreaming when I saw it, and you know, and that's fine. And that's just fine. I'm just gonna pop it out. Where did it go? You know, when you have something in mind and then it's gone, and you're like, come on, let's do this one. I kind of like this one, it's loads of fun. This one is nice too, actually. Uh, maybe we'll do this one. It is pretty easy to do. Yeah, you know what? It's nice and big. Let's do it. Let's do this big one since I only have one of them. And the other thing that you're going to need is you're gonna need a pencil of some sort. Um, it doesn't have to be super sharp as long as, you know, it's got some, some sharpness to it. By the way, can everybody uh, see them okay? Uh, what was the question? Why use a gesso board? Oh, that's a great question. Um, the reason that the reason that you um, have to use a, um, the reason that I like to use a gesso board is because 
Um, I, I do like the texture of it, but I also like the way that the gelatos kind of sits on there. And I find that with a um, clay board, the, the, the gelato doesn't sit that well. Now, um, I think I, I'm just getting asked right now, do I have a picture of a face? Of course I do. So let me show you how you, we would do it with a face and with this. So let me just go grab one. It's just in the other room here. Oh, no, it's just right here. Um, so I'm going to show you. So for example, sorry, I'm just grabbing one. Just give me a sec. Okay, so I'm going to show you the photo that I had chosen that I um, had inspiration from. It's not like totally perfect, but you know, that's kind of the inspiration picture that I chose to do this with. Okay, um, but you can really grab anything, right? Like you can choose to do this, and I'll show you how to do all this. Um, it's really, really easy. Um, here's another one. This is a fairly easy one because it's a black and white type photo. Um, so you really don't need to use a whole lot of colors, um, quite easy details. There's a lot of, uh, shading going on, which I'll show you how to do that. Um, this one will just take a long time. So I chose not to do that on this Ustream and I thought we'll start slow and then, um, and then we can move up, you know, you guys can come take one of my classes and I'll show you how to get more in depth. Um, but you know what, this one right here is, is pretty simple. Everybody can do it. And I thought, you know what, let's, let's do something like this. Is everybody okay with that? Or do you want me to do a face? Oh, you like the version better than the photo. That's nice. <laughs> Her hands are not quite done yet. So I do have to finish that. But you know, I did that when I was, uh, at the show so it's not uh, let's do flowers okay flowers are good awesome all right so what you're going to need I'm gonna move this right here so you can still see it as we go along and we're gonna take some carbon paper did I say you need a carbon paper I think I did too much talking not enough playing right all right and that's not carbon paper that is the piece that is protecting it so let's take out one piece if I can get it out one two three very thin paper. There we go. Okay, so you'll need one of these, right? And you can go to Staples. I think I got this at Staples, you guys. Okay. I was like, I don't have, I, I, you know, I know how to draw, so I don't tend to use carbon paper very often. So I did have to buy, go and buy some for you. Um, and so what you're going to do is you're going to place, you're going to move this out of the way, and you're going to place the uh, gesso board down, and you're going to place the black side of your paper onto the gesso board. And then you're going to take your drawing, okay? You gotta make sure it fits so that it's not kind of going over too, too much, okay? And every once in a while, I do like to kind of tape it down. Um, so I'm just gonna grab some tape because it'll help with um, ensuring that it doesn't move around too, too much. So definitely get yourself a little bit of tape. That does help. I'm gonna just, whoops. See, it's sliding a little bit, so that's why you want to make sure you kind of tape it to the table. Okay. All right. All right. I know you haven't used carbon taper paper in years. I know. I hear you, sir. I hear you. All right. So here we go. All right. So now we're kind of on there. All right. Can everybody see? Okay. Is the lighting all right? All right. And we're gonna take our pencil, and it's not very sharpened, so I am gonna grab another one to have on hand just in case this one dies. And we're gonna start, and you're literally just going to, actually we're gonna start from the bottom, and the reason we're gonna start from the bottom is I don't wanna miss any pieces. So you just kinda of press really, really hard, and you're literally going to trace all of this. And so this may take just a, a little bit and I'm not going to do it perfectly because the reason I don't like to do things perfectly is because I kind of like to put my own spin on it. As you guys know, I never do things as we see them, right? It's kind of my, my signature thing. I like to be different. My poor mother had to deal with me being different. 
any other questions and we're going to use um, a couple different mediums um, for the background as well which I will show you as we go along and so as long as you have just kind of a leafy effect that's good right it does not have to be totally perfect but what I like about um, this type of uh, clip art is that it's easy to follow if you've never done this before I would certainly recommend uh, doing something that has lines like this so that you're not stressed out about uh, shadows and such because it can get a little bit um, what's the word intimidating if you will right and you can see I'm really not being perfect about my lines because you want nobody knows that you've traced this right and they don't have to what was the question um, <laughs> you learn to type in a manual typewriter that's hilarious you guys are not allowed to show your age you know I remember when like um, we in the house we first got a computer and it was you know it's like holy macro you look at that thing and it's like ancient I'm almost 40 if you're wondering that's kind of that's my age so you know I'm getting there I'm getting old not that old but you know I'm definitely starting to show my age lately the amount of times that I have to dye my hair now is insane my poor hairdresser every six weeks I'm like in there like a dirty shirt how did I get on to uh, doing hair I have no idea coloring hair no sure not sure you guys are talking about typewriters I'm thinking how old I've been getting my skin can routine skincare routine has changed adding some hyaluronic acid making sure that I got retinol <laughs> all right so we're getting there not that far off we just need to make sure we get those beautiful petals in there so just getting some of that detail I'm not going to do every single detail because I can work with um, I just don't need to I don't think you can always add it with our gelatos and my carpal tunnel is killing me I think I'd rather draw than press this hard okay this is kind of the boring part you guys so you can just watch me trace here for a minute Okay, so just like that. So that one's done except for the um, except for the insides, which we'll kind of fudge here in a little bit. And then we'll do this guy right here. <laughs> uh oh. Whoa. Uh oh. I just moved it too much. Sorry about that. I just want to make sure that oh, close enough. I moved it a bit. Are you guys talking that I'm young? Is that what you're saying? I hope so. Say, Limor has no idea. 40 is the new 30. That's what somebody told me the other day. I was like, are you kidding me? 40 is the new 30. I don't know. My skin doesn't say so. My skin's like, what? Getting close to being done. Sorry, this takes a little bit longer. But I kind of wanted to do it on camera. All right. Perfect. Sometimes I like to do this with a colored pencil when I'm teaching so that people can kind of see where they've colored because otherwise it's like they don't know they forget certain lines and then they move the paint the tracing paper and they don't know what they've done so I tell people to use colored paper all the time or colored pencil I should say I'm sorry and because this is a flower oh I'm so sorry I'm covering the camera sorry about that I got carried away there. I got carried away. I apologize. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> tell me a story, you guys. You have to tell me a story. I haven't seen you guys in so long. I feel like it's been forever. <laughs> you guys talk about the olden days while I trace. I love it. So cute. I promise you it'll be much more exciting here in a couple minutes. All right. So I think these um, I will do um, on my own. So we're kind of done tracing. Maybe we'll do a couple of them. Um, I just I don't really want to do too much. I think I'll do them. I'll do them after. I just wanted to kind of um, get those lines on there, and then now you're going to pull them off. I just want to make sure. You know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to do some of the stems so that I kind of know where they fit. And then um, just so that I kind of have an idea of where they sit. Perfect. All right. See, how does that look? Isn't that awesome? Super easy, right? Uh, uh, you want me to tell you what I've been up to? You don't want to know. I haven't been that well, so um, I, it's not been good. Um, yeah, you don't want to know. Trust me. Okay. So um, what I, well, I went to London and then I got sick. Um, that's all I can tell you about that. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of close this off since I kind of missed that little piece right there because I moved the paper. And what we'd like to do is I'm going to take a little bit of the Pearl Texture Lux. I love this stuff. And I like to just kind of go around the edges. And actually, I'm wondering if I should do this. Maybe we'll do this at the end. Actually, that's what we're going to do. We're going to kind of line it up at the end. So forget that. We are going to use the Texture Lux in just a moment. But the first thing is we're going to figure out the colors that we want to use. And so what do we need? Our trusted gelatos, right? So I've got several bins here full of gelatos, all right? Some that you can't even see. And what you want to do is, let's say, I love using this one. This one is bubble gum. So let's use bubble gum and for the flowers. So we'll do maybe a little bit of bubble gum. And so you're going to apply that literally on your palette sheet, okay? And you're going to leave that right there. We're also going to use, um, let's use the small ones just because they're fun. Let's use banana. And so you're going to, do we want banana? I kind of like this one. This one is lemon, isn't it? Yeah, it's a little bit brighter. So let's use lemon. It's a little bit dirty, so there we go. So we just kind of apply it kind of like, like paint, right? So we're going to apply it right there. And we do need a little bit of green, correct? And so let's take what color is this? This is a little bit of kiwi. We don't have much left on there, but that's okay. We're going to grab a little bit of kiwi. And then maybe we need, is there another kiwi right here? No, this is ice pear. Ooh, ice pear. Nope, that's too shimmery for me. Let's do, um, I don't know, I think we can get away with a tiny bit of teal. Just a tiny bit. Not too, too much. So we'll put that right there. The ones that we're using, we're going to put right there. And then we need a little bit of a green. Okay. Oh, here we go. And we've got, this one is lime. Oh, it's brand new. Wow. Oh, look at that. That's gorgeous gorgeous and we don't just want one color of pink for these flowers so what about this one what is this passion fruit and maybe mm, this says it on the top is guava so let's do a little bit of guava just like so and a little bit of passion fruit well it's very close but a bit more purpley i guess if you will all right, so those are kind of the colors that we're going to use. Maybe an orange too, just because I love my oranges. And so this this is our palette now, okay? That is bright. This one is the neon one. It's orange soda and also mango. So we're gonna mix them together. That's what I'm gonna do. I've decided. All right, just like so. Yeah, does that look good? And now we need some water. So. I do have a thing of water right here. And the other thing you could use 
is if you have a spray bottle, sometimes I have them right here, yeah. I have these little uh, spray bottles, and so they are easy to use because you can just go ahead and just kind of spray your um, palette sheet. You don't have to oversaturate it, but just a little bit so that you're able to pick it up. And then what I've done is I've actually picked up a whole bunch of brushes. I like to have a whole bunch of brushes, um, all different sizes. I have a whole bunch of them um, here as well, okay? And I'm going to start by coloring. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to start with, I'm thinking the um, I'm thinking the leaves, just kind of the easiest thing. And the first thing that you want to do is you want to just wet your brush. And I like to just kind of wet the surface. And what I like about the carbon is that it doesn't really um, move too much. So I'm not worried too much about uh, getting that muddy effect. And it'll give me a nice um, detail line anyhow. And so I'm going to go ahead and just pick up some of my gelato and watch it just kind of bleed, right? It's almost like you're working with um, watercolors. And we will intensify the color in a little bit, but you can see how easy it is to just kind of um, fill those in. All right, and just pick that up. And try not to worry about intensifying the color too, too much at the beginning. Okay. Just let that soak in. You need layers. Painting requires layers. And I feel like sometimes we just go a little bit too far, too fast. We go too far too fast. You know what I'm saying? And then I'm going to grab a little bit of the light one just to kind of layer it already. And we're going to go right in there. There you go. It's okay if you go over a little bit. Ooh, apparently I had some red in my hand. That's okay. We're going to cover it up anyhow with later. Don't worry if you go over the lines. I went over the lines with that painting like crazy, so don't worry about that. Just kind of go in. Beautiful. Okay. And you can see as it dries, it kind of starts to get lighter right and so we're going to let that sit for just a moment i do want to add i thought i had a darker green where's that really dark green that i had here it is i've got some uh green tea it's just a little bit of green tea i'm going to add right here and i want to do that a little bit for the stems if it allows me just a little bit and what's cool is that i could technically i know you can't tell on camera but I could technically just kind of go in a little bit with the green because it's already wet and just kind of use my fingers a little bit too. Just have to be really careful not to um, overdo it and over smudge it. Okay. And just kind of let it, there we go. Just kind of add it with the gelato and still take your brush and very, very gently, just kind of um, move it so that it still stays dark. I think I'm gonna move the camera down just a little bit so that you guys can kind of see a little bit more of the details that I'm working on, if this allows me to do that. Just give me one second here, just for a moment. I just think that it would be very beneficial to you guys if I moved it down just like so. Is that better? Just a little bit. Perfect. I think it is. I think you can see it a lot better. Just kind of playing with it, letting it dry for a moment. The problem is, is that um, sometimes it takes a little bit to dry as we go along. So I'm just going to let this green part sit and we're going to kind of move on to the other parts and then come back to this one to deepen it and create more and more layers and create depth in those leaves. So I'm going to leave that off to the side. What I have to say, what I love, about, the reason I love painting with gelatos like this is because I don't have to worry about my dry brushing with paint on it. You know how acrylic paint dries really fast? Even though I'm a total acrylic painter, I find that uh, it drives me nuts anyway. So I'm gonna go ahead and use a brush kind of like this um, for the flowers because it'll give me a little bit more of a, um, what's the word, um, ability to, um, to have control. I guess you could say. So I'm going to start with the pink. 
Okay, it's already drying on me. You can see, oh yeah, it's drying on me. If it's just kind of doing that and it's not really moving around, and I didn't really wet this very much either. So we could just actually go ahead and just wet this a bit. Okay, that really does help. There we go. If you guys are hearing a guitar, that's my husband, and I'm really sorry he's practicing. He's been trying to learn how to play a guitar. It's really cute. So if you hear that, I'm sorry. I tried to get him to understand that I was doing a show tonight, but apparently you know, he didn't quite get it, which is fine. After a glass of wine, you forget everything, don't you? Everything your wife tells you after a glass of wine. All right, so just like that, I know it looks patchy, just let it sit, it will soak in. And we're gonna go ahead and dry it up in just a moment, so don't worry. We're gonna end up picking up some of that color. Just kinda like to let it bleed. It's a process. Or, no, you guys say process, you guys say process. Here in Canada, we say process. You guys say process, I say process. I think, I think so, at least I do. I'm speaking for all Canadians now. All my Canadians, you gotta help me out here. All right, all right, just like that. Sorry, that light is is uh, which one is it? Is it this one? Yeah, that's the one. Sorry about that. All right, and one more. We're just going to paint it pink, and then we're gonna deepen it in just a moment. Create layers and layers, and then if you run out of color, guess what you do? You add more right onto your palette. Okay, you don't want to go right into here because it just makes it a little bit too dark and uneven. Right. And then because we have our green brush already, we can actually go in with the green. And just go in with a little bit of that green. Just a little bit of that darkness. And because we want darkness, then we can go in with this guy. And you know that gelato's been blend so beautifully on gesso. They love to blend so much better on a prep surface, which is kind of my favorite thing to do. See how much darker it is now as it's dry. So the trick is not too, too much water. Okay. Oh, what's, oh, they look glossy. No, it's just because it's wet. It's wet. They're, they're not glossy at all. I know it does tend to look like that. It's just wet. That's why it's glossy, but no, I promise you it really isn't. Okay. Uh, it's just the lighting. It's this one right here for some odd reason. It's this one right here. Let me see if I can change that lighting. Give me one sec. see if we can change that. I have so much lighting in this room that sometimes it's overkill, but let's see here. Mm, it didn't kill that light, that's for sure. Hmm. Oh. Did it help at all? I don't know. Maybe. It's definitely in my eyes. <laughs> All right, let's keep going with this. So now that this is kind of dry, I do like to take a paper towel. As I ran in the other room. I like to take a paper towel and just kind of clean up some of those edges. And they clean up so nicely. You can just literally just wipe some of those off. So like I said, you really don't have to worry about going over the lines too, too much. But just kind of cleaning that up and just picking up some of that excess water, okay? These are kind of these, uh, they're white shop towels, so they're really, really absorbent. I really like them. My husband got them for me at some, I'm sure at automotive shop of some sort. They're great. And so if you see too much water, just pick it up with the paper towel, because you can always go back in with the, um, with the gelatos here in just a moment, okay? 
So now that we kind of have that first layer on, yes, they are matte when they're, when they're dry. I promise you that. And I like to really make sure that my brush is fairly dry since my, um, since my palette is wet and I'm going to go in kind of with the darker colors and start my shading. And sometimes what I like to do is I kind of like to apply it right on the edges and then work outwards. So we'll do it on this shading on this side of kind of have this be the darker of the side. Okay. And so with my fingers, I just kind of pat and this guy has to be quite dry. And this is a process, you guys. It doesn't come like just by um, osmosis. You really have to work with these gelatos in the blending. And so very, very, very light strokes. You can kind of see the shading that's starting to happen. All right. Very, very gentle. You don't want to like press your brush too hard and pull. You just want to very ever so lightly just tap. And you can start to see the shading um happens and you definitely um i want to say that this right now do not use baby wipes baby wipes are not your friend for this okay and then again use your fingers and if you're um you'll notice that if your um board is a little bit too wet it kind of smudges too much and your uh it over blends i guess you could say so I just kind of let it sit, but you can already start to see the shadow that's that's starting to happen, right? And so it's kind of happening over here. It's a little bit darker about right here. Just kind of thinking that the light's coming this way, right? And then it's darker on this side. And so again, just kind of patting, letting this dry on its own. Doesn't take very long for this to dry. And what's beautiful is you can take your heat gun and start drying it and add layers and layers as you go along. This, ha I mean, this took two days, right, of layers and layers. Not that it needed to take two days. It's probably because I was talking um, to lots of customers and stuff. But uh, you certainly need to just be patient and layer and layer. This is not going to take us two days, obviously. I picked something that, you know, we could finish tonight, but... Um, that one just had a lot of depth and shadows and things like that. And this one, we create our own shadows. We kind of invent it. So just kind of playing with that a little bit. Any questions so far? Yeah, you can see the layers and the colors, can't you? Yeah. But again, very, very light strokes. If you go too hard... You know what will happen, right? Pretty, so pretty. Love it, love it, love it. All right. And so now what I like to do is I like to, on the outside, I think I'm going to make it um, kind of light. And then up here, we're going to make it a little bit dark. So if we go in with a little bit of this guy, just kind of like so. Kind of dark inside isn't it and then maybe like on this part it'll be dark right because if the light is shining this way right, maybe like that okay and then we're going to take this guy but we're going to make sure right that we're cleaning it off right onto our paper are going to just move that along just like so and don't worry about if you went over the edges remember that it's not a big deal and again what is your best tool I always say this in all my classes is your fingers why don't you start to see the depth a little bit I love kind of the, uh, can you see the texture that the fingers leave? I'm just going to show you in a minute. Can you guys see it? I don't know if it picks it up. Let me let the camera focus here for a second. 
There we go. Let it focus. Let it focus. Nope. Nope. It's not focusing. I wonder if it showed on this one. Let's see if that shows the. Hmm. There. Can you kind of see? This is what the fingers. Oh, I'll take my finger out. But the finger kind of gives this um, really cool texture. Um, on the gesso board, it's hard to see on camera. Obviously, on the Ustream camera, it does not pick it up very well for some odd, odd, odd reason. I'm going to go in with a little bit of orange just because I think it's a little bit more fun. Just because. Why not? When you have more colors, just use them. That's what I say. That's my motto anyway. My dirty finger. All right. Just adding a bit more colors on there. Right, just like so. And then making a little bit darker right here. And as it dries, it just kind of sits. All right. And then this guy could be just a little bit darker. So we're going to go in, color it in, and then again with our fingers, very lightly. All right, just like that. Let that sit for a couple minutes and we'll add more layers. So the other thing that I wanted to show you, we can do this as well, and we, and we will, we'll do it. Um, so if the light's coming here, we'll, we'll have a, probably a bit of shadow about right here. Okay. And this is, well, it's not that wet. I can actually go in kind of in a circular motion and just blend it in. I like to not add too much water. I probably added a bit too much water before. I'm going to kind of soak up a little bit of that actually. I like to blend when it's not super, super wet. Um, I think it blends better. I think it creates better layers. And then we'll do a little bit of shadowing up here. And always, I kind of like to go in a circular type motion because I think it creates the best um, effect. And as, as it dries, I just kind of go back in with my finger and just start to blend things out. And I know I say this a lot, but don't worry about the edges, okay? Sometimes I repeat myself because when I teach classes, I find that I get asked the same question over and over. So I just like to make sure that you know, if you weren't listening or you were had to walk out of the room or whatever, that you um, you didn't miss that. So I apologize if I repeat myself over and over. It's just part of teaching, I think, that I like to do. But you can start to see the depth, right, of um, these flowers are starting to just kind of come aloud. Um, yeah, so this is a gesso board. So the gesso just kind of blends, right? Um really really easy to work with I find I just I absolutely love it like I can't say like I can't say anything more than it's just bloody awesome I need a little bit of yellow on there just a little bit to start to add a bit of depth to those flowers and this is where you just kind of get to play too right and again, you notice that I'm going in a circular type motion, right? But look at that. It just kind of blends. It just kind of pulls together. Somebody was making fun of my hand motions the one day. I think it was like if Deb Mac is on here. Um, I was teaching a class at her store, and she was making fun of my hand motions. She says, I always did this. <laughs> Are you on here, Deb? Do you remember that? You're making fun of me. I love you. But you still made fun of me. <laughs> Just kind of getting some yellow in there. How cool is that, right, you guys? And those lines are great, right? They just kind of add a little bit of depth. You don't even have to worry about them and how imperfect they are. 
Oh, no worries, Leslie. Okay. Any questions so far? Uh, I know, right? We just started with the line drawing. And, uh, and this is what you start to get. It's pretty cool, you guys. Um, I really encourage you to, you know, play this way. Definitely fun. I'm just kind of squishing a bit of the gelato on there. Just kind of creating a bit more depth on there as well. I'm not, see, the thing about these is that you're, you shouldn't be afraid to play. Because at the end of the day, if you don't like it, add more gesso. Like, really, right? It just really doesn't matter that much. Go ahead and pat to create fabulous texture. I'm just going to kind of let it sit there for a moment and uh, dry before I go ahead and blend it some more. But really cool so far. So let's work on the um, background of it. So one of the things that you can do that I love to do is, oh, this one dried out on me actually the other day because I left it open. I forgot about that. But I do have another one. This one is silver, and this one's silver, and oh, do I have one right here? Oh, I did. Nope. Hang on, hang on, it's coming. Just need to open it up. Come on. I just need something super sharp. I need to open up a new one. Open up a new one. It's time for new. Perfect. So this is the Pearl Texture Lux. Okay. So you guys have seen it, right? Pearl Texture Lux. Love it. There's all sorts of colors, but I think the pearl will be the prettiest. And will it even show on camera? Can you see that pearlized finish? Beautiful. But what I want to do with it is I want to mix it with a color. So let me actually go ahead. I'm going to pull this off to the side because I can make a new one. And I'm going to grab a whole new sheet because I can. And I have gray ones right here. They're kind of my favorite ones. This is another palette sheet. But I use this for painting because when I color mix, it's actually so much better. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and pull a bit of the texture lux. Probably about that much is good. It's probably maybe a bit too much. And then I'm going to take, what colors do you guys think? Maybe teal, that teal that we, because it's got, um, it's got some shimmer anyway, right? So why not? So I'm going to cut it. Ta-da, just like so. And I'm going to squish it. Just like so. And just give it a really good um, rub, <laughs> if you will. And what I find is that the, um, all of the metallic colors are a little bit more crumbly than other colors, um, but they still blend beautifully. And then I'm just going to go in and kind of blend it all out. Mix it in, I should say, not blend it up, sorry. Mix it in, just like so. And then you get this absolutely gorgeous, just gorgeous, um, kind of pearlized teal color. Yes, they both do. All right, just like that. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. And sorry I'm saying that, but Eva was kind of saying that today and now it's in my head. Ava's my youngest, and sometimes she says stuff and then gets stuck in your head. And I'm going to use a paintbrush for this, actually, you guys. Okay? So just take a paintbrush. I like to load my paintbrush because it is a, I think it's an acrylic polymer, right? So I'm just literally going to go in and start uh, painting it on. Now, what you don't have to worry about is if you have something underneath, don't worry. We can add a couple layers, and we can deepen it with gelatos. Um, over the top to create shading as well once it's totally dry. So if you went over the lines, don't fret. Okay. A couple layers of this will cover it all up, I promise. See, that's already covering up the, the little um, orange boo boo. All right. So you're just going to go in. 
probably a bigger I prom probably using a bigger brush than I <laughs> should however that's what I'm using right now Let's see if I can find a thinner one for some of the other um, places that I probably can't squeeze into isn't that pretty I don't know if can you guys even see that gorgeous shimmer in person the shimmer is just to die for it's gorgeous oh wow my brush is falling apart you know how you know that you mistreated your brushes it's because this happens terrible I'm terrible how many of you are bad with your brushes I know you all are there's a few of you that aren't but I know you all are I don't believe you if you tell me that you're good all us artists we're all so bad with our brush look what I just did see this is how bad I am with my brushes look, it's falling apart on me right. so don't worry about too much but just get those edges a little bit pretty easy project though right you guys and I want to show you something before I kind of finish. I, feel like, I kind of feel like I'm going to take forever, but anyway, I'm just going to do it. And then I want to show you something as we go up, as we move along. I'm trying to do this fast. I'm not being very perfect just because it's a show. I just want to try and get this done and show you all the steps. And we ran a little bit late just because of our technical issues at the beginning. So I apologize. All right. So close enough. Okay, it's not like perfect, perfect, and I know that. Don't worry about your brush strokes too much. That just adds a little bit of texture. It's like acrylics, right? texture is gorgeous right just like so and I know it looks it looks kind of blue on here but it's really teal um, and um, I want to show you I'm gonna take my heat gun for a moment and I'm gonna dry some of those just so that I can show you the depth that you can create Oh yes, I totally have done that too. Left the brush in there and the whole head just falls off. Totally. Many, many brushes have gone that way. So to add depth now, what I like to do, there's a couple things that you can do. One of the things that I like to do is I do like to go, once it's dry, I kind of do go in a little bit harder with my gelato, right? Because now everything's dry. There's absolutely no water whatsoever. And I really go in and blend. And it really does allow you to blend. Because you can go in with a second layer of the teal to cover up those lines anyhow, right? But you can see the depth on there, right? Just like that. Okay. And I just kind of go into the edges a little bit more into those lines even. Use those kind of fold lines as your guidelines to get a little bit darker. Look at that, right? So much depth. I love that. But you have to do this while it's dry. You kind of won't get this look and unless you do the first steps that we did um, earlier. It just, it just doesn't work the same. Trust me. Tried it. Been there. Cool, huh? Yeah. 
the edges are pretty cool. And so then we just go in and blend a little bit more. And I know this is still a little bit wet as I'm getting finger marks on, on there, but that's okay. So the other thing you could do if you're brave enough is I do like to take like a, what is this? Um, just, well, no, this is not it. Where is it? A black pencil. Oh, do we have a black? I know we have a black favorite castell pencil. Is this it? What is this? No, this isn't it. Where did it go? Okay, no, I can't find one. I love it. Do you love that when that happens? I guess you could go in with the uh, uh, brush pen, and if you wanted to deepen up those lines, you could go in because it's a gesso board, and then blend those out. Oh, sorry, I'm off camera. There we go. Could go in and deepen those lines and really just get a beautiful blended effect. It really is up to you. If you wanted to do that, you definitely uh, could go in there. I'm just gonna show you what it would look like if I deepen um, one of them up a little bit. And then I just kinda go towards the middle, not the edge too much. It just kinda gives it a bit of depth, right? It pulls it up a little bit and so Right, just like shadowy type effect. I, you, you guys know how much I love my Stamper's big brush pen, right? It's kind of like a a staple in my classes, always. And then just deepen, right? I love that you can blend. I mean, what marker do you find out there with India ink that can blend like this? You just can't. It's beautiful. So, but I just kind of wanted to show you the difference between one that, you know, has that depth in it versus one that doesn't. So you can really, um, go in, right. Um, and then the other thing that I wanted to show you on here is you can go in later with your, the same color that you mixed it, uh, mixed in and deepen it a little bit. So you just add, because this has shimmer in it. It's not going to jeopardize kind of that metallic, oh, not shimmer, I'm sorry. It's got that metallic look. It's not going to jeopardize that pearlescent um, effect that you already have down, um, but it'll certainly uh, give it a bit more shadow. Do you see that? Isn't that gorgeous? So you can just kind of go in. I just love that effect. And that's why I tend to use the um, these pearlized or what are the like metallic colors? I'm sorry, metallic color, colors with the pearl, because when I go in and deepen the color, I'm not losing that beautiful pearlescent effect. So, do you see that how deep it starts to get? And you can layer and layer and layer as much as you want um, to make it as dark as as you want, right? Just like so. Isn't that gorgeous? I love it. It's my favorite color. I have so many of these teal ones. It's not called teal. What is this one called? This color is called metallic mint, I think. Yeah, metallic mint. All right. Just like so. Any questions? These, um, these, yeah, these uh, Stamper's Big Brush Pens are fantastic. I'm going to show you. Some people ask people ask me this all the time. I do have a gesso board right here that I can show you on that is untouched. So, um, and I'm going to show you on a regular piece of paper, actually. I'm going to show you on, I'm going to show you on this piece of paper. Actually, let's grab a, a different one just for fun. Um... So, just for those of you that have never seen the Stamper's Big Brush Pens, on a regular piece of paper, when you apply the India ink and you go in and blend, nothing happens. When you do it on here and you go in, you can blend, which is really, really cool. So, the faster you go, the more you can blend it out, which is why I love 
to use it um, on things like this but one of the things that I don't recommend is don't go in and make a whole you know shape and then try and blend it out because it won't right um, it'll dry out really really fast so you definitely want to go in quite quickly make a line and then blend right away okay um, and of course depending on your surface it'll blend differently so on something that's a bit um, more not as porous as a gesso board you'll be able to blend even more okay um, so it really does depend on your substrate um, for the Stemper's Big Brush Pens but they're certainly my absolute favorite I do have to admit I don't know I could never live without any that's for sure so um, like on here right let's show you really quick right you see you can blend really really quickly Right. I'm mudding up just a little bit, but that's okay. I kind of want that. I can deepen it later with the lines. Right. And then even some of the folds that kind of got lost in there, I can just change it up a bit. Just play with them a bit. Right. And I can do the whole flower so that they're all uh, really nice and, and in depth. I know I just did a little bit, but I just kind of wanted to show you um, how it works. <laughs> you usually have to Google. I hope you don't have to Google. I hope that you've learned something um, in my class so that you don't have to Google things after because that's the whole point, right? Is coming to these classes and getting a ton of information about um, the products. So did we enjoy this? I, that's pretty much um, all I've got for you tonight. I know we're already at 10 after. Um, let me see if I can switch the camera. Let me grab the camera here so you guys can see me. I'm gonna stop the record. Thank you so much for watching. For those of you that are watching the recording, I will go ahead and chat a little bit with those that have stayed behind. And I hope that you join us in the next Ustream class.